Hey, it's Ken Golden. We are here in Chicago at the National Sports Collectors Convention. It has in, been an incredibly busy day, and I've got a friend with me, Josh Luber. How are you doing? I am pretty amazing. Thank you very much for having me. It, now that you have two booths, I can catch you here. I can catch you over there. Like it's, Exactly. Uh, you know? it's, it's confusing. we got one when you walk in, and then we've got one in the uh, corporate section. So for those of you who don't, do not know, Josh was the uh, founder of StockX and is a huge card collector and heavy into cards. And you've got a card fund as well? I do, I do. Uh, you know, my main job these days is just buying and selling cards and buying go. and selling cards uh, at, at, at Golden, you know? Yeah, there uh, you go. We did. We, we created a card fund. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know this, like the number of people that were asking for help buying cards yep. over the past couple of years. I mean, mm -hmm. they've been asking you for, for years. Um, we created a fund that was purely as a way to help those people buy cards yep. um, who were friends and, and everything else. But as you know, with cards being true investable assets, I think we're just at the, like, the beginning of like the financial services part of the trading card industry. And every time you sell a new card, it sets a new price, mm -hmm. creates value for the funds, creates value mm -hmm. for the investors. Like, mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's a, a big part of where this market's going to so go. How many nationals have you been at? This is the fifth uh, three when I was like 10, 11, mm -hmm. and 12, uh, mm -hmm. and 2019, and, uh, and now. Exactly. So, when... Um, um, which ones? Atlantic which, City. Which one? Oh, which ones you had as a little kid? Atlantic City. Okay. Atl uh, I, whatever years that wa that was, you know, uh, ninety. Well, I guess ninety one, ninety two. I don't know something around there. I okay, mean, yeah. small, like I, because you know, I, like you, I, yeah. I grew up in Philadelphia. Yep. So it was like a big deal. There was like a oh, there's a big card show in Atlantic City. We yep. should drive down there. Yep. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah. So I've been. I took like an eight year vacation at least from them, but. Uh, Probably in, in what years? Like in mid 2000s. In yeah, so I stopped in 2001 through 2009. I either I didn't go to any, or I only went to one. Other than that, it would be from 1987 through the uh, through the present. That's amazing. So um, I was actually at and giving away free promos. At that famous 1991 Anaheim that people people claim is a what do they say 100,000 uh, people. Yeah. Uh, this is more crowded. Yeah. So I, I can tell you know I can tell everybody from this a. This is more uh, crowded at a time that that two years ago this wasn't even we weren't even open at this time yep. on Thursday. Yep. Right. Like yep. so they they've added days they've added stuff. Do you like obviously it's more crowded. Do you feel like the the energy level is like where you thought it'd be? You think it's higher? You think it's more like? I am shocked um, it is so many it's a cross between so many people here that have been doing it for years yeah and so many people who got into cards in late 2019 and 2020 during the pandemic and we've been seeing the and, and just you, you, you can almost look at people and you can tell this this is like this is their oh, first yeah. national they they want to see everybody they want to do everything they want to see what's for sale they want to show off their cards I mean I've got literally a cross between with me people coming up to me you know they just want to take a picture yeah uh, people coming up to me and they open up a briefcase and they got like five million dollars plus and then I've got the guy like literally 15 minutes before you came here coming up to me and say can you do me a favor can you look at my Walter Payton and Ken Griffey Jr. cards and tell me what they're gonna grade yeah okay so it's just it's it's really exciting and it to me when I look at this it's like the marketplace is exploding and I mean it's exploding now when you when you realize that up until two months ago we didn't know yeah. that there was going to be a convention you yeah know? yeah what you know to your point though on the new people and everyone mm -hmm. coming up there um, the first card show that I went to since the pandemic was about five six months ago in Dallas mm -hmm. yep. and the number of people there that were the number of people there that were the, the StockX customer, mm -hmm. the, like it felt like sneaker con. There was literally mm -hmm. two booths at the, that Dallas show mm -hmm. of people selling sneakers, mm -hmm. right? Like that crossover, that convergence of those people. And mm -hmm. like you look around, the number of like kids here that like, the average age from 2019 to mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. has gone down by what, 20 years, yeah, 30 I years? Yeah, amazing, right? I, so I, and I think that's great when you just look at, at the, the future of the hobby. This is actually, I have a question for you because mm -hmm. obviously like Golden Drive's pricing mm -hmm. and the kind of standard for the market, but we've obviously seen a big dip in cards and mm -hmm. in, in a lot of pricing over yep. the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. My 
hypothesis that every other part of the market is mm-hmm. as strong as it's ever been. Mm-hmm. You think that's is that accurate? That ju- it's just prices that have come down a little bit, but the rest of it is they're as strong as it can be. Yeah, I mean, I look at it and I say, okay, are people getting into it? People getting out out of it? Yeah. So you know, I I like that. I think the uh, comparisons is like our user base. If you look at the first six months of 2020 versus the first six months of 2021, we have four times as many daily new registers on a daily basis as we did four years ago. That's awesome. It's, excuse me, it did two years ago in uh, last year. Yeah, last year, 2020. Right. And that was the pandemic. That was a lockdown. I look at it, our user base, 20% on a daily basis is outside of the United States. So it's worldwide. It's and global. And is that, is that a big jump from before? When I started Golden in 2012, I think less than a half of 1% of my users were outside the United States. I think, yeah. um, I think my total soccer sales, as an example, from 2012 to 2015 was probably under $100,000 in total gross sales over those four years. Um, now, there probably hasn't been an auction in two years. They haven't sold at least a hundred thousand dollars soccer cards. Exactly. A single say, card. In this, in, this, yeah. in this current auction, we have at least four cards that will go for over a hundred thousand, yeah. or already there. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So, what do you've got here? Well, you know, it's cards. So I figured I'd pull out the one like mm-hmm. really big card I, I'm pulling around. So um, this is a, an Otani 2018 Bowman Chrome Red number to five PSA 10 Pop two. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never been I've never been super early on players, mm-hmm. but I, I think I've been really good at coming in like just on the way up. And I've mm-hmm. been buying a, a ton of Otani that I started about six months ago. Yep. So I've been good on this, and so I feel like this is the one card I'm, I'm considering consigning to, to Golden. Mm. So uh, you know, well, there, you know th- there's a couple of big ones that sold in the last auction. So yeah, we got 148 thousand dollars for the orange and right. Simple math, right? Simple math. There's 20, 25, 25 of those. 25 orange and five of these. Yep. <laughs> So and and hopefully with the increase in uh, international user base yep. um, as well. By the way, is a big part of that international growth Asia or is it or is it it's, all over? It's, it, it is all over, but it is I'd say heavily concentrated Asia and uh, Australia. In Australia. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. But we've got buyers from all over, I and mean, we've got you know every time someone registers from Russia, I'm like how, <laughs> but they uh-huh. do. And I'm like okay, <laughs> so, what are they going to buy? So I. Uh, I went to a. I took my wife on a vacation to this small island off the coast of Portugal. Mm-hmm. Four hours into the middle of the Atlantic, I honestly can't remember the name of the island. Mm-hmm. And I emailed the stock. This was like two years ago. I emailed the stock X people. I was like, "Can you tell me if we have any customers here?" Mm-hmm. And sure enough, we had like six customers that had bought sneakers in mm-hmm. this tiny island in the middle of the the, the mm-hmm. uh, Atlantic. I have no idea, and yep. I have no idea. And I, I like that level of of of. Uh, of permutation, uh, permeation of, of our culture and products yep. throughout the rest of the world, is that's why I think it's still super early in cars. No, no yeah. I, I, I think when I look at the marketplace, you know, with the number of people getting into it and the amount of income that they have, people, you know, I see these 16-year-olds spending $10,000, $20,000. I've got one 16-year-old that has literally spent over a million dollars with us. Yeah. And, you know, I'm somebody, look, I was buying and selling when I was 13, you right. know, and ads in the Sports Collector's Digest back then before the internet. So I look at the market and I realize how small we've touched upon it. You right. look at all the people that are sports fans throughout the world. Um, I used to say billionaires want to buy sports teams, millionaires want to buy cards. but. Everybody wants to buy cards now. Billionaires are buying. By the way, there's way more billionaires than there are sports teams. Yes, there are. So yes, there are. Yeah, they got to so buy something there. So I look at the marketplace. I think, look, when you look at all the venture capital money, you look at the tops going public. You look at the golden investment. Yeah. You look at um, what Panini's doing. I think that we are probably at the second or third inning. And what people have to realize is that. An individual card may go up or down, okay, and that yep. people can't read too much into one sale. Yeah, you know, and a print. You know, when I call a print of a card, like it just because like it's auctions off and sells for a certain price. If it's a price that is way above or way below, you can't react to it. It's a trend. 
And the trend I see in general is prices are going up. You compare where they were a year ago. Yeah. The number of people looking to buy the cards are going up. Yeah. I mean, in some statistic, we have like the number of bids placed in our auction for the first six months of this year versus last year. I think it's like 10 times as many bids placed in 2021 than in 2020. Yeah. So it shows me that the market is really growing. And there's a friend of mine over there. I see him um, two booths away. Mm -hmm. He um, distributes to Walmart. Yeah. He is, um, owns, owns all the trading card aisles and m much of retail. Yep. He tells me to this day, he can't stock the shelves. Literally, the day they get product, they're out. Yeah. So as long as the retail market is selling everything out, we're not, we're not feeding the hunger. Yeah. So, so I have a, 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 a slightly different take on the the inning analogy, which people have been using for a while, right? So I do agree that part of the market's in the second or third inning. I think the company infrastructure is in the second or third inning. I think yep. prices are like the seventh inning. Yep. Um, and I think the, the when you look at the infrastructure of Tops and Panini, mm -hmm. of their evolution into digital, if you look at just even mm -hmm. the fact of a new acquisition of, mm -hmm. of PSA and Golden working together, yep. PSA being shut down, I mean, they have a long way to go to reach the infrastructure in the second inning. The pricing, some of mm -hmm. that is, mm -hmm. is way up, you know, in yep. maybe the seventh or eighth inning, right? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, like, to me, I think that's where the most growth is going to happen around all of that. So Yeah, I mean, I, I'm looking at a general general industry. I mean, look, obviously, you get some of these prices. You know, you see a uh, Mahomes card sell at $4 million. You figure, right. okay, where can that go from here? Right, because if it's a second inning and that's a $4 million card, what does that mean? Does that mean that's a $100 million card mm -hmm. in, in five years? Exactly. You, you, that's what, But then you look at somebody right. like Otani. Where before the year, his orange was what, twenty-five grand? Not even. Yeah. Not even. Yeah. I mean, it was probably five grand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then it goes up thirty x and hundred percent. Right. right. So yeah. it, it's it's very very performance on the modern guys is performance dependent. I think that the vintage market is going to continue, yeah. um, because it's just so little supply. Yeah. You can't go back in time and create a fifty-two mantle. You, you can't even go back in time and create a '96 Kobe. Right. So to me, you know, I look at that, and you know, the um, card manufacturers have to um, not overproduce, not get too greedy. I don't. I gotta tell you, man. I think we're sitting on the precipice of that. Mm -hmm. I think, like, get, be, to your point on on not being able to stock shelves mm -hmm. at Target. Yep. Um, They've obviously started to sell more NFT and mm -hmm. digital cards, yep. which I think is a good way to distribute it. But those companies, their job is to make more product. Their yep. job is to sell product. Yep. And like, I feel like we're sitting on the precipice of. Mm -hmm. Industry is 100% different than it was, obviously, yep. in the 90s, right? Yep. Like we, we won't, we will not sustain a crash like that. It will not kill the industry the way that, that it changed it back then. Yep. But man, like I think we're sitting on the precipice of overproduction. Yeah. Well, they, you know, Pri when, when, when I open up 12 uh, prison basketball right, boxes right, and I don't exactly. find anything good, you know, it, what it means is that they're not raising production on limited cards. Obviously, they're all still numbered. Right. They're just making a lot more base cards. Right. And you know, the days of people, you know, we saw we saw that stat. What was it like? How many 1990 Fleer Jordans were sent into PSA in the month of May? I, mean, I, I missed that. What was some? It, like, it was. It was like no. It was like some stupid number, like five thousand or higher. 1990 uh -huh. Fleer Jordans. Right? Yeah, and people, yeah, yeah. you know, and those have been sitting in people's closets for the last 20 years, and everyone's yeah. like, "Oh, I have a Jordan. I'll send it in." Exactly. Or one, yeah. one, or one guy sent in five thousand because right. he had five thousand of them. Right. But you know, the, the days of people going out and. Uh, Figuring, okay, fine. I've got this base card uh, Luca. I've uh -huh. got this base card Zion. Or I've got this base card Mellow. You know, the grading prices are up, so they can't right. convert it very quickly, right. and it's just produced too high. To me, though, what that does is it makes the limited edition cards much more important and much more valuable because people realize, wow, it really is the golden ticket. It really is the needle in the haystack, and that's where I've got to put my money. A thousand percent, but it, but they can't keep making more product. Mm -hmm. the 20, 2021 Prism, mm -hmm. uh, Blowout was selling cases at, at 25 grand mm -hmm. before the season started. Yep. Immediately, the out was down to like 15 grand. Mm -hmm. So, and Panini was selling, uh, was selling direct cases at like two thousand dollars or boxes at two thousand dollars a box. Yeah. Now it's down to like eleven hundred. To because to your point, if all that's valuable is that chase card, yep. the really valuable card. So like at some point they can't keep selling uh, that many products at that thing. Yep. Like something like will break. And and I'm not I'm not exactly sure what it is. Like I think what happens is that um, uh, the the people just stop paying that amount for those cards. 
Yeah, I mean, look, the card but, manufacturers are still going to make money because they're not the ones, they're not doing 5X a second hits, hits the shelves. I mean, they're not the ones who are taking a $19 Target box and putting it on eBay right. for $79. That's right. You know, they're not doing it. So they're yeah. still going to sell that at their $19 price. Yeah. Okay, it's just that the people who think, okay, I'm going to go to the store and clean out no matter what it is, indiscriminately buy off yep. every single box, and I'm going to triple my money, that's what's going to yeah. end. And by the way, that's actually a good thing, right? It's a good thing to be able to have product mm -hmm. that sits at Target that, that like an eight-year-old kid can go buy a box of cards for ten bucks, yeah, right, and, and just to have a box. Let of cards. an eleven-year-old so, boy go in there and get a box, yeah, right, yeah, that's cool. So this has been fun, man. Thanks cool. for having me. Glad, yeah. glad to be here, and uh, thank you for coming. And uh, let's work something out yeah. on the refractor. Let's figure it out. Cool. So thanks, man. Thanks, guys.